We're here at a stormwater pond in Sarasota on the campus of New College. And this campus, like virtually every other property in the state of Florida, has a mixture of both native plants and foreign plants from other countries. Most of these other plants are not a big problem, but some of them are tremendous problems. And one of the worst is this plant in front of me. It's called Kogan grass. It's a plant that has a serrated leaf edge, so things don't want to eat it. It spreads by both wind-borne seeds and underground rhizomes that creep through the soil. And it's been identified as one of the 10 worst weeds on the planet, and it threatens a lot of the United States. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details that distinguish this really threatening and noxious plant. Kogan grass, Imperata cylindrica, is from Southeast Asia. It's uh, threatening native habitats and plants uh, throughout the state. Over 20 counties have serious infestations. And even though it's best adapted to full sun conditions, it can grow in moderate shade. Unfortunately, it does really well in fire-based ecosystems where it burns uh, very hot and uh, can actually survive fires that kill mature pine trees. Kogan grass can appear in a number of forms. If it's mown, it can remain relatively short and flower well short. It can grow uh, at least four feet tall, and it has a characteristic in the prairies hereabouts of growing just a few inches taller than the surrounding vegetation. So you need to be alert and look for anything from uh, ankle height to over four feet in height. Kogan grass is a perennial grass. It has extensive rhizomes. The majority of the biomass of the plant is underground. So when you damage the top part, there's plenty of energy reserves for it to bounce back. When you get close to the plant, you can notice some additional details that will help you identify it. And there are three things I want to call your attention to. First, it has a sawgrass-like leaf margin. When you run your fingers down the margins of the leaves, it's very sharp and saw-like. Secondly, the mid-vein, what we call the mid-vein on a grass leaf, is distinctive in Kogan grass because it's not in the dead center. It's offset to one side. So when you have a grass with a serrated edge and a mid-vein to one side, you should immediately be suspicious that it's Kogan grass. To help nail down that determination, reach down to the soil level where the um, leaves are coming up out of the ground and that will have a circular or cylindrical feel to it. Many grasses are kind of flat when they're coming out of the ground. And those three characteristics will help you identify it when you're close to the plant. One distinguishing feature that uh, identifies most patches of Kogan grass is that whereas the grass has almost a fluorescent green or yellow tint to it, the tips of the leaves, the ends of the leaves themselves, frequently have a weathered or brownish look to them. And if you see a clump of grass um, that has a kind of glowy yellow character to it and the tips of the leaves are a weathered brown, you should suspect Kogan grass. The bloom, or the seed head, is also very distinctive. It's a puffy, silky white uh, panicle. And once you learn to recognize this, you'll be able to spot it even at 70 miles an hour on the interstate. Um, it can be disturbed, dispersed in a number of ways. Um, the seeds are dispersed by wind, and it also, as I said, spreads by rhizomes. Mowing equipment and other heavy machinery can spread the seeds, and it also gets transported in hay, mulch, pine straw, fill dirt, and lime rock. It typically flowers in the late winter to early spring, but it can flower and seed year-round if it's disturbed. So now that you know a little bit about this plant and know how to recognize it, please don't let what happened to us here happen to you. When you start to see an infestation of Kogan grass, get on it right away. If not, it'll spread and you'll have a major problem on your hands.